You've probably heard that if we're going to avoid the worst effects of climate change, we need to electrify everything. That means transforming a world powered by fossil fuels into one that runs on clean, renewable energy like wind and solar. You may also be aware that our homes are a big part of this solution. Right now, buildings produce about 30% of greenhouse gas emissions in this country from cooling, heating, lighting, and cooking. And it turns out electrifying our homes could also be better for our health. Last year, a study came out saying 13% of childhood asthma may be linked to gas stoves. So you're ready to electrify your home? How does that even work? And where do you start? That's our burning question today. And I'm talking to Donnell Baird, founder and CEO of the climate tech company Block Power, Block Power helps individuals, businesses, and nonprofits retrofit buildings to be more energy efficient. And he has some tips for those of us who want to make some changes in our own homes. So first of all, what does it mean to electrify your home? What are we talking about? And why would someone want to do that? Well, we find that the simplest way to think about it is, you know, electric vehicles, the industry has figured out how to take the fossil fuel engine out of, out of all of the cars and replace it with a smart, modern, all-electric engine. We now can do the same thing for all of the appliances that use fossil fuels in our homes. And so hot water heating systems, air conditioning systems, um, uh, ovens, some folks have gas ovens, all of those use fossil fuels. And so we can remove all of that fossil fuel equipment and replace it with smart, modern, all electric equipment. And that's what it means to electrify your home. And the reason you want to do it is because you can reduce your overall emissions by 60, 70 percent. Um, buildings are 30 percent of emissions of total American emissions. And there just isn't a path to addressing the climate catastrophe uh, without retrofitting and electrifying all the buildings. And so for folks who care about climate, but also folks who care about their family's health, um, electrification is the way to go. So Donnell, let's say you're talking to uh, several friends from different parts of the country. How would you advise them if they wanted to get started on electrifying their home? What should they do? Well, the very first step... Um, we want to we want to talk to folks about replacing their lighting and making sure that they have all LED lighting, um, shower heads in the bathrooms and low flow toilets can be a really um, interesting place to start. Um, depending on the part of the country that our friends are in, if they're in Chicago or Milwaukee um, or New York City or Buffalo. We may want to have them start with organic insulation. Uh, we don't want fiberglass insulation. It has lots of particulate matter, and when you breathe it in, it's unhealthy. So you want organic insulation. Um, and, and so in the northern half of the country, particularly in the Midwest and the Mid-Atlantic and New England, you do want to start with organic insulation as well. And th those are kind of low-cost, entry-level retrofits that you can do in your home that will start to reduce your emissions and make your make your home um, more electric. So it depends on where you live, what the housing stock is like, and what the climate is like locally? It depends on where you live, which part of the country are you in, which climate zone are you in. Our country is divided into several different climate zones um, where we study the weather patterns. Um, it depends on the type of building you're in. Are you in an apartment building or a single family home? Is it a big single family home or a smaller one? Um, all of those, all of those factors will impact where you should start. So if you're in a multifamily building in New York City, 10,000 buildings, apartment buildings in the Bronx still burn oil. We definitely want to start with getting those buildings off of oil and moving them to all electric heating and air conditioning. Um, if you're in LA in a single family home, you may want to start with solar panels on your roof. And since you have to drive a lot in LA, you may need to do EV charging um, and, and, and shift your vehicle to, to all electric. Um, up in Northern California, 
uh, in Oakland or San Francisco, you may actually want to start with heat pump hot water heating systems hmm. um, because a lot of your energy uh, that's a lot of the fossil fuels that are being burned in your home is actually to produce hot water. The, the, the climate's a little bit more temperate, right? And so you don't have as much of a need for air conditioning. You don't have as much of a need for heating. And so in those homes in San Francisco and Oakland, um, it's actually the hot water heating system. So it depends on climate zone, building typology, the age of the building, the kinds of ways that the building has been maintained, the kinds of equipment that are in there, it can get complicated, but you want to start with organic insulation and LED lighting and, 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 and water conservation efforts, and then move to identifying the single biggest source of fossil fuel consumption in your home. And that's going to vary by region. So we hear a lot about heat pumps as one of the big investments uh, people can make. What exactly is a heat pump? Why is it better than, say, a, a gas or oil um, boiler in the basement? Heat pumps are a breakthrough technology. They're, they're almost like a silver bullet for fighting the climate crisis. Um, buildings produce 30% of our emissions, as I mentioned, and heat pumps can reduce those emissions pretty dramatically by as high as 50, 60, or 70%. They're just wow. a hyper-efficient technology. So if you think of your air conditioning unit uh, and think about um, it having the ability to go in reverse, a heat pump pumps hot air uh, into your home during the winter and it pumps hot air out of your home during the summer. It runs that air, um, across some compressors and it has refrigerant lines. Um, but it, it has a performance efficiency of up to 70% reduction in energy consumption versus, um, some of the fossil fuel systems, um, that you may have. So it's, 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 it's a technology that's been around, but the newest version has only been around for about four or five years. There are heat pumps that can function really well, even in really cold climates. Before, mm. heat pumps can only function well un until it got to about freezing, about 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, then they started to, to work less well. Um, but there's a new kind of heat pump that uses variable refrigerant flow technology, pretty technical. But basically, it means that uh, heat pumps can now work in sub-zero temperatures. There's heat pumps that are functioning in Alaska and Maine, even when it's really, really, really cold. What if you're a renter and you don't have control over how you heat your home um, or, you know, the ability to install solar panels on the roof? Are there still things renters can do um, if they're concerned about, you know, wanting a cleaner uh, building to live in? Yeah, there's a couple things. Um, we, we think renters are really important. We think that renters can have conversations with their management company or landlord or building owner to say, hey, this building isn't very green, which means it's not very healthy. Um, it, it may be producing methane and benzene and, and nitrogen dioxide. We think there's a way for you to save energy and save money by upgrading to heat pumps or LED lighting. Um, if you go to our website and answer... Um, our questions about your building, even as a renter, you can answer 10 minutes worth of question about your building and you'll get a free PDF and scope of work that will tell your landlord, hey, there's actually $30,000 uh, worth of incentives that you can get as a grant per apartment unit to upgrade your building. And so whether or not landlords will make sustainability upgrades because they want to save the planet, and we think that they won't, um, they certainly want to maximize their bottom line and so we really encourage renters to talk to their landlords and property management companies about, hey, did, did you know that you could get ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 per apartment unit for free to do upgrades? Yes, those upgrades need to be for clean appliances, but they're going to bring down our energy costs and our energy bill. Um, so this is an opportunity uh, for landlords to, to, to make more profit. Um, they can increase profitability. They can reduce CapEx. They can reduce operating expenses. And um, studies from MIT indicate that buildings that are green um, increase in value by 11%. And so hmm. the building becomes more valuable. So we, we talk to landlords about how they can make money and what the economic opportunity of going green is. And those are the kinds of conversations we encourage 
uh, renters to have. And we try to provide those renters with all of the information that we can so that they're ready to have that conversation about economics with their landlord. Well, let's talk about the cost, because I think a lot of people are, are a bit daunted by trying to figure out how would I pay for all this? Uh, as you mentioned, there are rebates, there are um, there's some funding sources out there, but it can be really f- hard to figure out how to get them in your own state. I've looked. Um, so can you talk about what, what money is out there and how people can actually get it? I wish I wish there was a simple answer. I wish it was less complicated. Unfortunately, that's not how the energy system in America is set up. <laughs> um, it's just not. Yeah. Um, the way to think about it is you have your energy utility. And they, in many cases, actually want to help you reduce your energy bill, not because they're nice people or not because they're trying to save the planet, but because the energy grid, um, the gas pipelines and the electrical wires that they own and operate are old and are deteriorating. And so they need to reduce energy consumption or else they're going to have to make huge investments in upgrading the entire grid system. And so one place to start is that your local energy utility may have incentives for you to access as a homeowner. Um, your, your state may have compelled, uh, your state regulators may have told that energy efficiency utility to make that offering to you. But overall, the Biden-Harris administration was able to get um, a significant amount of money for rebates and subsidies to homeowners across the country in all states into the Inflation Reduction Act. And there's an $8.8 billion program. And in aggregate, they provide about $30,000 in subsidies and grant money for homeowners to access in order to electrify buildings. So there's never been a better time to electrify your home and decarbonize your home or your building and your life. So let's say someone is ready to invest um, in electrifying their home, taking one or more of these steps that we've talked about. Um, Are there enough contractors out there to do all this work? And what should people consider when when hiring someone um, to do this work? Because I imagine, especially in older homes, it can be challenging. There's a generational shortage. I'm not going to lie to you. There's a generational shortage of skilled construction workers to install these systems, uh, whether it's heat pumps or whether it's energy efficiency upgrades writ large. Solar's a bit better because solar's been around as a technology for a bit longer and it's outside the home and you can use satellite data and it's kind of easier to install. But going into the guts of a home and figuring out how to alter the physics of that home from the basement internally, it's, it's a really intense process. Anybody who's renovated a kitchen cabinet knows how complicated construction can get, even on simple projects. And so if you think about ripping out uh, the energy system from your home and then replacing it um, across your entire home, that can get complicated. And so many construction firms haven't been trained on how to do this well. Um, The manufacturing companies are investing in robust training programs that they offer to construction firms that want to learn how to do this well, and they offer those programs for free. But the broader problem is that in America, we just have a a dramatic shortage of skilled construction workers and construction firms. And so we we do need uh, an intervention from a workforce development standpoint in order to ensure um, that homeowners and building owners across the country um, have access to the skilled labor that they need. How much does it cost? I mean, is there an average? Is there a way for people to kind of um, guess what what it would cost to do uh, the most impactful things in in a typical home? Or does it really vary depending on where you live? Look, you can get a you can get a lot of cool stuff done with a thousand dollars. If you really want to fully go net zero, that can that can run you anywhere from twenty to fifty thousand dollars, depending on how big your home is. Um, you know, do you have a new roof? Do you have wires that are upgrading? All the considerations that we've talked about. So there's a broad range, right? So if you, if you have a couple hundred bucks or a thousand bucks to get started, you should. You should do your LEDs. You should do a smart thermostat. You should do organic insulation, no question. Um, and um, if you're budgeting, you do you do want to be thinking about fifteen to uh, thirty thousand dollars as a as a moderate sized project for a moderate sized home, uh, but fortunately, um, if 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 you're interested in the rebates that are 
coming down in a month or two, you can get $30,000. And so what we're trying to figure out is how do we help uh, folks in Ithaca and Denver and across the country to plan so that they can fit their projects in under that 30 K and uh, have a scope of work that's actionable um, that they can uh, take into Home Depot or Lowe's or what have you, or into the state energy office to, to, to complete projects. And so it is a slow, 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 fast moment, unfortunately. And that's kind of the way our industry goes because it's, it's driven by kind of the pace of the federal government. 